only he'd thought of this earlier. Harry started heaving the rocks across to the wheelbarrow as quickly as he could, placing them gently on top of one another, trying to make them balance somehow. But they never did. He never even noticed the earth stir beneath him until he went to shift the final layer, by which point it was already far too late. A hand thrust through the soil without any warning, cold and clammy, knocking him off his feet, its long claw-like fingers clutching onto the remaining rocks for support as a second hand burst up, twitching alongside it. Harry watched in horror as some unearthly creature hauled itself up from beneath the ground, grunting and growling, watching him as it rose from its grave, covered in grime, reeking of decay. He tried to run, but couldn't. His legs refused to move. Then he heard the creature laughing, its aura flaring angrily above him, bathing them both in an awful crimson haze. The demon had been disturbed, woken from its tomb. And Harry knew then that this was to be his very last day on Earth. The day that darkness dawned. Doctor Who, The Rising Night, by Scott Hancock, read by Michelle Ryan. The doctor's eyes snapped open and he woke with a start. He wasn't used to waking, he never normally slept so it took him a few seconds to work out where he was. Or rather, where he might have ended up. He tried to remember what had happened to him, but his mind ached, his head throbbing with an all-too-real pain. What had happened to him, exactly? His vision was blurred, but he could still hear voices muttering above him. People gathered together, studying him, talking in hushed tones like they'd never seen a man before. At least not a man like him. He could tell from the way their voices echoed that he was indoors, and he was pinned to the floor. He could feel a pair of strong human hands holding him down. Still, could be worse. At least the floor was quite comfortable, and they'd gone to the effort of lighting a fire. He could just about feel the heat from it, blazing away somewhere behind his head. Then the doctor's vision began to clear and he found himself staring up into the faces of at least seven officious-looking men, all dressed in a smart array of waistcoats and breeches. Eighteenth-century Earth, the doctor smiled. Got to be. 